Hello, my name is Theodora Guasaferro, and I would like to tell you the story of how I met the love of my life, Erasmo Guasaferro. I had a friend who had met him the days before in his sister's house, and she asked him what kind of a girl he liked, if he was married, if he had a girlfriend, and he, always teasing around, said black. He liked a black one. But he was referring to the color hair, not a dark-skinned person. So my friend Anne had two friends, me who had the dark hair, and an Italian friend who had light hair. Well, anyway, she told me about him, and uh, the only thing she said is that he's leaving in a week. He was here for a couple of months, but this was his last week and he was anxious to meet me. Well, he called me and he asked where he could meet me and I gave him the address of where I was working. So as I came out of the office building, there he was diagonally waiting for me. And just as he described himself with his raincoat and his hat and in his arm, he was holding a magazine called Vision. He was standing there. So it just struck me funny the way he was and I came out smiling. The date was May 9th, 1961. Well, I asked him, what is your name? And he told me, Erasmo Guastaferro. I told him mine. And he asked me, this is all in Italian. Now, I understood Italian. I couldn't speak it that well, but I was able to be understood. And I spoke in phrases and he knew that uh, he could uh, understand me. So he asked me, where do you want to go? I says, to eat because I just came from work. So someone had told me about a restaurant called El Giucho Bianco, which means the white donkey. So we took a cab and we went there. And uh, I can't remember what we ate, but we had a nice dinner. And then as we came out, I told him I had to go home. It wasn't that late, but it was time to go home. And he walked me to the BMT station, the Brooklyn Manhattan train station, because he had to go uptown to the Bronx, where he was staying with his sister. Well, I said uh, good night to him and thank you. And uh, he asked if he could call me, and I said yes, he could. And that was it. So. I went home that night and uh, my girlfriend who introduced me to him had called me and wanted to know all the details. So I told her and I said, well, he told me he would call me, but who knows because he's leaving the end of the week. He called me the very next day and we met again. And this time I was with his, uh, my girlfriend who met me too because he wanted me to go to his sister's house to meet her, they lived in the Bronx, and it was a six flight walk up building with no elevator, so you could imagine. <laughs> well anyway, there I met his sister Catherine and her husband Ambrose, and I also met the Eugenio there, and the Uniceta who were there also, and some friends of theirs. Well, anyway, we had a nice time talking and knowing everybody, and uh, they were glad to meet me. And then I went home, and the very next day, he called me again. Well, to make a long story short, as this was his last week of vacation, he called me every day, and I saw him every day. And uh, then he told me he would like to write to me, and I gave him my address. And that's how our romance started, with letters going back and forth from Brooklyn to Caracas, Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela to Brooklyn. But the thing is, he wrote in Italian, and I had to answer him in Italian. Well, since I wasn't an expert in speaking Italian, but my friend Anne, who introduced me to him, was, every time I got a letter from him, I would go around the corner to her house, Luckily, she lived around the corner only and not further away. She translated his Italian letter into English, and then I would go home, or maybe the same night, it depends, answer him in English, and she would dictate to me my words in Italian, and I would send the letter to him. 
So the very first letter he received from me when he answered it, he said, oh, you lied. You said you don't speak Italian or write Italian, but you write beautifully. And of course I had to explain to him that Anne helps me with the words because I didn't know how to write all of them and this and that. Well, this was on May 9th, 1961, that I met him. And we had a long conversation in letters and on the phone. And he wanted me to go to Venezuela to meet his family and to see the country and everything. And the only thing I could promise him was, well, if I do go, it would be to know him better. It didn't mean anything more serious because goodness, I couldn't uh, say anything more permanently since I didn't know him that well. Well, my mother and I went to uh, Venezuela and uh, they lived in a four flight walk up apartment, no elevator. And uh, he lived with his brother who was single and his mom. The story is that we stayed with them for about a week, a week and a half, and I got to know him better. And uh, we saw that we cared for one another. And he said that he would go to uh, Brooklyn and uh, get a job there. and we get to know each other better, and uh, he really more or less proposed to me, and I was a little bit interested, otherwise I wouldn't have agreed, because otherwise I would have said, look, I'm sorry, uh, there's nothing could come of it, and that's it. He went to New York from Venezuela the following year, and we got to know each other better, and uh, he proposed to me naturally, we were married, February 3rd, 1962. We went to Florida, we went to the Yankee Clipper Hotel, and would you know, Joe DiMaggio, the famous ball player, was there, and that hotel was named after him. Maybe it was his, I can't remember now. Mm -hmm. And luckily, you won't believe this because it sounds preposterous, we saw him because he came to sit at the next table that we were sitting at. They said he was waiting for Marilyn Monroe at the time. He was seeing Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I even got his autograph. And uh, Erasmo's cousin met him and knew him. So uh, he even told him about his friend and his cousin. After the honeymoon, we stayed with my mother a while until, and my dad until we found a little apartment not too far away from them, which we rented. And he got a job. And uh, there he worked and found a job. It was hard for him to get used to uh, American life and all and working hard and all the rules. And we were close to the uh, station and everything because he didn't have a car at the time. So everything was fine because we were close to where my mom and dad lived. You could walk it there or take a bus and uh, it would be there soon. And we, every weekend we were with them and all. And then uh, Joanne was born nine months, 16 days later on November. When Joanne 16. was two years old, we moved permanently to Venezuela. Mm -hmm because we had gone when she was a few months old, but then we went back to Brooklyn. And then when we moved back permanently, she was two years old. And we lived again with his mom in this uh, four flight walk up apartment until we found a place of our own and we had rented it. So little by little he was learning to speak uh, English. I was teaching him every night. He was working in his father's factory where they made children's furniture. And uh, he was happy, of course, to be uh, back in Venezuela. Now, we had a good marriage, and uh, I loved him, and he loved me, and he loved his children dearly. And he was a hardworking man, and a good man. Unfortunately, he didn't take care of himself too well because he smoked a lot and working in a furniture factory with all that wooden acerine, how do you call the acerine? The wooden uh, Dusting. dust and things, smelling it so many years, he got cancer in his lungs. 
and uh, he died. And that is the story of how I met Erasmo Glossifero in my little life in Venezuela. I don't want to do this. Why? Because it's stupid. Why well, gotta talk and you write it and you read it? No, I don't want to just say. keep going. You're doing, you're doing great. Tran, I can't, what's the word? Traduce, tradu, oh my goodness, trans. Translated. Translated. I couldn't get the verb. That same year, in May, I believe it was. No, in June, I can't remember now. Because I met him on May, in May. Oh, maybe it was July. <laughs> it doesn't I matter. haven't written he's down that. That died. No, his dad didn't die then. Didn't I meet his father? Oh, where the hell they got? I can't remember. Well, anyway. Put it on board. Let's go. Cool. I'm going to take time out. Okay, take time out. Okay. What do I need to do? Oh, no, Daddy, I don't want to do Who wants this? Who wants this? More. You, you want it? Get out of here, I write it down for you. Joanne, you want stay it. down. No, you stay here. And you said a week. No. We weren't there a week. Stay longer.
It's all this here like every day. Because oh, when he we drove down, that's right. We drove to Florida. Just you two? Of course, on the honeymoon you don't go with anybody oh, yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we didn't drive to Florida. I'll get back to the story in a minute. Take time out. We'll come back to this again. <laughs> Grandma. <laughs>